and I'm thinking about Lent and Lent is a time of preparing for Easter of great sorrow and great joy, which is what Easter is about for me. But also I think Lent is a time for reflection. It's a time to look at our faith journey. And for me, it's a time to reevaluate the past of my faith. And it's a time to look forward to try and discern what God's will is for me and for everybody else that I know. My first faith journey began in January 1947, when I was presented by my parents for baptism at Long Causeway Church, which was then Ebenezer, so that's 70, <laughs> many years ago. As a young child, my teachers at Sunday school, which was Sunday afternoon then, they told me stories of Jesus. There was Mrs. Howland and Miss Popperwell, and it was a, a time of great joy. And I remember vividly singing, hear the pennies dropping as we danced around the room, dropping pennies into a jar. It was very simple faith then, and it was uh, a very happy time. Later as a teenager, I led my own group in junior church, and that was now part of Sunday morning service. To enable me to be a leader, I had to attend a prep group on Monday evenings, and the minister there prepared us for the Sunday in junior church, what we we're going to do, presented the Bible passages to us and explained them age relevant for the different people who were there. It was then that I started having more of a look at my faith because until then I hadn't heard a sermon really because we went out. So I didn't hear an explanation of the Bible passages. I knew the stories, but I, I didn't know what they meant. But now I was about 16 and I was, I was going to Monday prep class to learn more about the Bible so I could pass it on to my, my group. This was my introduction to really thinking about faith, my own faith. And then when I was about 18, I became a church member and had church member classes for about six months. And with which was which again was was really eye opening, uh, having to think about what it meant to be a member of the church. Now, church in the seventies, the sixties, the seventies, actually it was a very lively church. There were many societies, lots of different age groups. But what happened? What looking back, what it was? It was fundraising. We were raising funds to keep the church going, and we were raising. Uh, funds for the annual bazaar, no, biannual bazaar, where the church sold oh, this, that and the other and people had stalls and at the end of the day we got very excited when we were told how much money we'd raised. But that was what the business of the church seemed to be to me in those days. I mean, I wasn't in leadership, I wasn't a deacon then, so I, I didn't know the workings of the church. But at the age of 17, to me, it looked to be a, a really nice place to be, lots of activities. But it was it was more towards effectively raising money. Well, new ministers brought new insights into the church and uh, we stopped a lot of that fundraising and we had what we call time and talent instead. And we were expected to bring our own money to church in the way of collection, but we're also to bring our time and our talent. And it wasn't for just church activities. We were encouraged in those days to work for charity to go out into Dewsbury and find a national uh, or I remember Sally going and she practically ran Save the Children for quite a long time. We were encouraged to uh, be out in our town working for charity and then coming back to church for, for renewal and spiritual renewal. Being a Christian then became more than attending church on a Sunday. We were in a church a church in a community. Then we became a place that could be of service to the community. We started activities such as Saturday morning coffee and those huge affairs on a Wednesday where people ran around with teapots and fed massive numbers of people. Great it was. We became a place for people to come and be served by us. 
we were there to to have to be of service to the community a place of welcome a place for the shoppers to come and then some we had wednesday um a service for the shoppers and the people that worked in dewsbury but what i always thought about that was that it was asking people to come into us we would welcome them we, you know, we do now but it, it was a, a thought of bringing people into us and, and we could welcome them be a service of them we had days away and weekends away where we came together to look at God's will for us and that's when I, I first was thinking about being a deacon in the church and so we had time and we had to go uh it was nice weekends but we, it was all bible study then we had days when we would look to see what God's will was for us and we talked about it and then more recently we started Super Saturdays it's actually nearly eight years ago doesn't seem that long ago but it was eight years ago when we started Super Saturdays and we tried to explain to the people who passed our doorsteps what our faith was through music and eating and puppets and dancing and seaside games and to prepare us for that, we had a series of um, cafe style churches and church services. I don't know if you remember them, where we, we had an in depth, I forgot what we called it now, there was eight weeks worth of talking and preparing so that we had a better faith for ourselves, which gave us confidence to go and talk to other people. We hope that church would be a place that people could say, did you see what that church was doing last week? They were outside. They were, they were doing this, that, the other. Oh, I know which church you mean. Yes, I went in there and we were a presence in the community. That's what we wanted to be. And then came COVID and that, that stopped that a bit. But after COVID, we got our lovely enabler who came, Caroline, came to help us think about mission. And we got Wellness Wednesday and Tuesday Tonics. And Che Church became, again, a welcome place for the community and um, wanting people to come in. And we had Bible study and weekly prayers were established. And I find this Bible study challenging, but gosh, it hasn't made me think. And I needed to. I was getting a bit sloppy, you know. I was sort of riding on the field book current about now look at all these nice people around, but I needed to think about what it was all about. Bible study and prayers inform us and sustain us. So that was that was how I've come to where I am today. That was my faith journey, and I, I'm trying to spend some time each day in Lent thinking about it. So now I ask, what next? What next? How do we define it? Well, by prayer and meeting together and seeking and asking God what his will is and waiting on God's will and thinking more and praying more, then we will know. We'll know what God wants us to do. I hope will not just be a place where people are welcomed in. I want to be a, a place where we go out. I don't know how I'm going to do it. I don't know how any of us are going to do it. I think it'll come through faith if, if it's meant to be, it will come. One Bible reading that I hold very dear is Romans. I'll read it to you now. Romans 10, 14, 15. But how can they call to him for help if they have not believed? And how can they believe if they have not heard the message? And how can they hear if the message is not proclaimed? And how can the message be proclaimed if the messengers are not sent out? As the scripture says, how wonderful is the coming of messengers who bring the good news. The good news of Jesus Christ and the redemption he offers is for everyone. In that passage, Paul states the obvious. You only believed in Jesus because somebody shared the gospel with you. Started with me when I was in Sunday school. If I hadn't been there, I wouldn't know about it. Some shared the gospel with you, making disciples stems from our own faith, which because we share the gospel with us, making disciples is about continuing the cycle of redemption and passing on the faith that we passed on to other people. So that was my little bit about Lent and that. 
Hope you found it of interest. We're going to have our prayers now. Let us pray. To whom can we go? We go to God. God has the words of eternal life. Lord, thank you for last night's sleep and thank you for today. Help us to waste none of today's hours and to miss none of today's opportunities. Thank you for the gifts you have given us individually and collectively. And help us to use our gifts to further the kingdom, your kingdom on earth. Lord, we have eyes. Let us use our eyes to perceive, ears to hear and listen, hands to work and create, minds to think and innovate, memories to remember and learn from, hearts to love and worship. Those are your gift to us. Let us use them wisely. Who can we go to, Lord? Lord, we can go to you. You have the words of eternal life. Lord, we confess that we have not always followed your words. There have been moments when we've chosen other options. We chose to join in the gossip and not to speak out on behalf of the misunderstood. We chose to take sides with the strong because we feared the consequences of being found alongside the weak. We fired back a text in anger. We hit send on an email in the heat of the moment. We spoke a harsh word of judgment and we regret the fact that what has been said cannot be taken back. We allow pride to get the better of us. We ask for your forgiveness and mercy, Lord. We thank you that you do not treat us as our sins deserve and your love and your word permit a new start. As we move around, may others see a difference in us. May we surprise others with the gift of forgiveness and our capacity to move on and make fresh starts. Lord, where can we go? To whom can we go? Lord, we can go to you. You have the words of eternal life. Lord God, we pray for our community, for teachers as they bring to fruition their preparations for the new children in their classes after Easter. For our children and young people as their summer holidays, come, as their Easter holidays are coming nearer. For healthcare and social workers in their mission to improve the well-being of those who are sick and unwell. And we remember Mark, who's got a long term in hospital. Remember John, who was moving around after his operation. Edie, Harry, who's been his normal, fantastic self. Lynn, Gwen, having difficulties now. Emma and Martin. All people, well, and we're thankful for her good recovery. We pray for those in the armed forces as they prepare for their next challenges in a dangerous world. We pray for volunteers, carers, and those who undertake work for which they are not paid. We pray for our church today and in the coming weeks as we discern your will in Lent. Lord, guide and inspire our community in all we do this week and beyond. Lord, to whom can we go? We can go to you. You have the words of eternal life. Lord, we pray for all people who are in trouble and fear today. For those who are sad because someone they have loved has died. For those who are anxious because someone is ill or in pain. For those who are lonely because someone they love is not there for them. Lord, we ask your blessing on those who are tired because they've got so much to do. Those who are struggling with finances or are facing the prospect of unemployment. 
bless those who are unhappy because of an unkind word or action. Lord, surround those in need with your wisdom, your spirit and your healing and your life giving peace. Lord, to whom can we go? We can go to you because you have the words for us, the words of eternal life. Lord, you called us to follow in your footsteps. Help us to know what this looks like in each situation that we find ourselves. Help us to know when following you means washing the feet of others, when it means turning over the tables, when it means going to a party in the house of an outsider, when it means breaking down the barriers that divide people from each other in the homes where we live, the places we work, the communities where we worship. We grieve over the fact that our world is divided and we ask that you work powerfully in our small lives and our big world to break down the walls that divide us. Break down the walls between Jew and Gentile, between male and female, between weak and strong, between young and old, between rich and poor, between, between board member and worker, between conservatives and reactionaries, between creationists and scientists, between Protestant and Catholic, between Christian and Muslim. Break down the walls within our lives which hold us back from reaching out to others. Break down the walls which prevent us from seeing the best in other people, in other cultures, which stop you, your love from getting in and your blessings getting out. Lord, to whom can we go? We can go to you, Lord, for you have the words of eternal life. Lord, in gratitude, in deep gratitude for this moment together, this place, this world, we give ourselves to you. Take us out to live as changed people because we have been touched by the living Lord and cannot remain the same. Ask much of us, expect much of us, enable much by us, encourage many through us. Living Lord, accept our lives and accept our prayers this day and every day. You have the words of eternal life and in you we trust. Amen. Do you want to put us all back together now again? David. Let's say if anybody wants to. Um... Yeah. Do you want to say the grace or have we finished? Yes, I was just, just asking you to um, yeah. um, Unzip us all. Can't, uh, people have to unmute themselves. Oh, I see. Can you unmute yeah. yourself then, people? Shall we say mm. the grace together? There's some people I'm not involved. Grace. How is it not to do it? start off. May the grace, grace of, our Lord, of our Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ, the love of God, love of God, God and the, and the fellowship, fellowship, fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. evermore. Amen. 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 Thank you, Pam. 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 Thank you very much.